And now I would like to go ahead and uh, give the floor to our uh, guest speakers and uh, ask them to briefly introduce themselves and talk a little bit about their organizations and uh, the things that they're doing right now. So first, uh, Mr. Joseph Ziegler, could you please uh, go ahead and a uh, little bit talk about yourself and uh, Astana Hub, what you're doing over there and uh, a little bit about your organization. Sure, uh, thank you, thank you very much. Um, I'm not used to being first with my last name starting with Z, so this is, really, this is a great opportunity for me. Uh, my name is Dr. Joseph Ziegler. I am in charge of the uh, Astana Hub within Nur Sultan, Kazakhstan. We act as a center to bring in entrepreneurs and startups, uh, but we also act as the uh, driver for the country's innovation program. So we work with all the different startups in the country in Kazakhstan, uh, regardless of where they're at, whether they're in the capital or they're in other cities. Uh, and we also help uh, draft a lot of the policies and give advice to the different ministries here, the Ministry for Innovation, on how to grow the startup ecosystem. Uh, my own background has been only startups my whole life. I started a company a long, long time ago called Netscape, which makes me quite old. Um, and I've had the, uh, well, I would say a lot of luck. You know, I've been able to work with a lot of good people where um, I've actually sold uh, five of my startups. So two, two IPOs on the NASDAQ uh, and three private sales. And uh, I've also acted as an investor. So Kazakhstan has brought me in to try to share some of uh, my experiences with the country uh, in general. Uh, what is the effects of uh, COVID-19 pandemic in the startup ecosystem in your country? So starting from Kazakhstan, so what, what is the situation in Kazakhstan right now? What is the startup ecosystem? Uh, how, how, is it, how bad is it affected by the pandemic? Uh, well, today, uh, today was the first day that we actually ended a, a state of emergency. So uh, we're still actually um, under lockdown. So uh, we're all still working from home, uh, as you can see. So Kazakhstan um, has some advantages in, the, in this case, is that our, our population density is one half of New Zealand. Uh, so we don't have a you know, really big metropolis. Uh, and so the number of infections has been quite low and the government's been very progressive, you know, taking the same steps, I think, as, as everyone else. Um, however, at the same time, we uh, have been impacted by the uh, drop in the price of oil. So for Kazakhstan, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a double, a double whammy that uh, with the virus, of course, hitting the economy and also the, 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 the drop in the price of oil, uh, is also going to impact us quite a bit. So I see um, this actually for startups is this is a great opportunity because there's a kind of a there's a pre uh, virus world out there. You know, it's, it's up to the beginning of 2020, and there's this completely different world now where people have worked remotely. We have to talk about you know what are we going to do if there's going to be a second wave coming in. People are doing talking about using blockchain, for example, to track. Uh, uh, people that are infected or people who have recovered. Uh, we're seeing a lot of more emphasis on uh, being able to deliver services remotely. And for Kazakhstan, that's a, you know, a very different environment. Uh, we don't have a tradition of allowing remote work. It's uh, still a bit rigid. But now that's starting to be uh, you know, broken down a little bit, so it's, it's much more flexible. So I'm actually kind of excited where if we can get people more open to the ideas of doing telemedicine, teleeducation, uh, this conference, you know, for example, being able to put together these types of conferences very cost effectively means that we can exchange a lot more ideas. So um, I'm actually seeing a, a lot of upside uh, once we're gonna be able to kind of move forward on, on everything. I think this is a fantastic opportunity for local uh, startups to fill in this gap uh, that the economy is going to kind of leave open now um, but uh, we, you know we'll have to see too because I think the impact on the world's economy the amount of unemployment and other things that are about to happen it hasn't caught up with us quite yet so we have to be prepared for that but as an entrepreneur you know we look we look at everything as, as uh, opportunities right I, I, I get excited about problems that can be solved and this is an area that there's a lot of technology and a lot of startups that I think can have a really positive impact on the uh, you know the post-COVID virus uh, world.
I know that many things will change and uh, the world is not going to be the same after the pandemic is over. So what's your organization's, I mean, do you have any strategies that you, you think will be in place after this uh, crisis is over? So do you have any changes in the strategy for post-pandemic era? So starting from Kazakhstan, for Astana Hub, is there any, any what are the plans for post-pandemic post era? I mean, no, it's difficult, I would say. Um the uh, you know leadership here they've got a lot of things on their plate right now and changing uh their innovation plans is probably not the absolute highest priority right now as it is probably you know many places we have a lot to worry about um but you know what we're really looking at now too is as mentioned before we have to get as much help internationally it is a big community and we're learning to connect with people and so we're really virtualizing everything at this point uh, I don't think that uh, there's going to be many events this year. I don't think there's going to be a lot of people. A lot of people are going to invest in actually having physical events, considering uh, everything that's going on. You know, um, and so we are looking at: can we virtualize our roadshow? Can we get our startups exposure to some of the uh, more mature startup ecosystems uh, without travel? And we're also in the process of virtualizing really all of our workshops, our accelerator program, uh, everything that we, we can, and just trying to reduce any kind of friction it's gonna to take to do things remotely. This is really our, 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 our next step. Um, other than that, uh, it, it, it's difficult to tell. Um, I, I have, you know, we have to kind of sell the idea that, I, that there will probably be no travel this year. Uh, which is disappointing to our startups because we have a big roadshow all planned, all these great places we were going to go go to, yes. uh, and now we're going to have to find a way to virtualize that. Um, uh, and that's basically where we are. Just uh, just take the opportunity to have only five minutes left. What would be your last last words uh, to the to the you know startups? I'd say you know, um, I think that the that pre. COVID world is, is, is gone and now we're looking at a completely new place and I would encourage startups to reevaluate what they're doing, what problems they're solving. Um, we have a lot of problems in the world now that I think uh, startups can contribute greatly to, highly impact uh, the quality of people's lives. Um, and I think this is also a, a good time for people to look at you know, what, what problems can they solve? We can't always depend on uh, the powers that be, the, the, the leadership is going to be able to solve everything. You know, uh, I think one thing about entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs is they're empowered and they're the kind of people who want to solve problems and the kind of kinds of people who want to contribute. And this is a great time to be able to, to do that and to do it with the global impact.